I'm going to do a video of this boost controller that I designed. I um, looked at a few different designs on the internet and um, own several different types of boost controllers. And it seems like people are charging an awful lot for something that's really not that hard to duplicate. So I um, I compared the best designs, the best features from several, and I came up with this, and it works very, very well. Um, I actually compared it to several that I have on my car currently. As you can see here, I have the electronic PWM style that's used by like AEM True Boost, uh, Honda S300s, uh, Boost by Gear, or just electronic boost control, also Neptune, and the like. They all use the same stepper motor, or PWM motor, I should say. Um, the bad thing about these is they're a pulse width motor, so they're always on and off. Like They're like a solenoid that chatters. And by disrupting the flow going from your, van your manifold vacuum to your wastegate is how they work. The downside of that is... Um, spool time is sometimes hurt because they don't actually stay off to let spool build up. They, um, they chatter. Uh, another design that I have installed on my car is this um, one by Turbo XS. I know Turbo XS don't have a very good name with some things they, that they build, but um, their boost controllers are actually pretty decent. This one's a dual stage model. Um, I was pretty much just comparing it off the single stage though to my design. Um, again, pros and cons of this are the cost, or the, it's a good boost controller, but the cost is rather high. Um, you'll see other ones similar to mine on the net that seem to be built using similar components. However, you'll notice one difference of mine is I don't have a jam nut at the top here. Um, you can adjust mine with just using an Allen wrench. You don't need to carry a separate wrench to loosen or tighten down a jam nut. And um, or have to worry about the jam nut coming loose and losing your setting. You just use an Allen wrench to adjust mine, and once you set it to uh, where you have it at, it stays put. Also, another feature of mine is I have a bracket installed, an aluminum bracket. I don't pre-drill out any holes here on the top. That way, if you want to use one or two holes, it's up to you. But this makes it handy for mounting or placement in the vehicle, so you don't have to zip tie it like similar ones do. So I'm going to um, show you how easy it is to install this now, and then uh, we'll do some uh, actual on-road testing and show you how well it works. Okay, I'm going to show you now how to install this boost controller. Um, the, the best way, the proper way to install a boost controller is to use a signal or source line that goes directly to the manifold. Not one that might come off your turbo. Some turbos have a little nipple off of the housing allowing you to connect to it, but by going off the manifold, you actually then use the signal that is the true amount of boost the map sensor and the engine sees, not what's coming out of the turbo housing, and then of course you lose through the intercooler and the piping. So you want to connect this side right here, which is in line with the adjustment, to the source from the intake manifold. And that's just as simple as just plugging this on and putting a hose clamp on it. Okay, as you see, I've slid that on. Um, the other side, of course, now the, this is the line that goes to my wastegate, or in my case, wastegates, I have two of them, um, and this just goes on here, slide it on and uh, clamp it if you wish. Okay, here it is completely installed. Uh, this line goes to the intake manifold, this line goes to the wastegate, or wastegates. The adjustment right now is set to zero gain, meaning that, um, the boost level should be only what the wastegate springs are set for. Which brings up a good point. Um, no boost controller is going to help you if you have wastegates or a wastegate configuration that isn't capable of bleeding off enough pressure. In other words, if you're having problems with overboosting or creeping, Boost controllers can't do anything about that.
because once they send the signal to the wastegate, the wastegate's all the way open. If you're getting creep after that point, it's because the wastegate itself isn't capable of bleeding off enough pressure. You, sh you might need a larger one, or as in higher horsepower builds, you might need two of them. So, we're going to go for a ride now, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to adjust and how well this thing holds uh, different boost levels. Okay, we're going to go for a ride now. I want to point out one other thing about my boost gauge. It, um, it has a playback feature. Basically, the highest boost level achieved can be played back by hitting a button, and it'll show you what the highest boost level was. We'll use this feature for uh, showing you the di how the different adjustments hold. Plus, I'll try to get some footage of the actual needle itself on some lower boost pulls. Uh, on higher boost pulls, I won't be able to hold the camera and uh, safely drive the car at the same time. So I'm gonna get out on the highway now on a nice deserted stretch and uh, do some shooting here. Okay, my car is kind of loud, but uh, I will show you. This is zero gain of the boost controller, so this should be wastegate pressure. Okay, that pull was uh, zero gain wastegate pressure, as you can see. We made exactly 10 and a half PSI, and that's exactly what my wastegate springs are in these wastegates, 10 and a half. So let's clear that out. All right, so that's clear, and now we'll go make a change on the waste on the boost controller and uh, do another run. Okay, like I said before, to do the adjustments, you simply turn this Allen head, and for that, you just need one of these. Uh, you stick it in the end, and you turn in clockwise to increase boost, counterclockwise to decrease boost. And uh, I'm going to give this here a uh, one full turn, and we'll do a run and see uh, see what we gained. Okay, I've turned the boost controller up a little bit, and uh, now we'll do another pull here. Okay, we just did the second pull. I actually turned it up. Um, a little over one full revolution when I turned it up this last one. I think I turned it a one full turn and a quarter. And we had ten and a half last time. And as you'll see now we have fourteen and a half. So one full turn and a quarter brought up fourteen or you know roughly four pounds. You do, you can turn in small increments as well. Um, I'm just trying to show you the difference. But what I want to show you so much is how quick the spool is and how flat or steady the boost stays. And as you see in those two videos, once my boost hits peak, it stays. It doesn't creep, it doesn't drop off, it stays. And that's what's nice about this boost controller compared to some others. Okay, this is going to be pull number three. Okay, well, once my car gets up to around 16 PSI, it starts to really want to brake traction too easy. Um, and as you can see, I turned it roughly, eh, just about a quarter turn. And we were at 14 and a half, and now we're at dead on 16 and a half. And you saw again how flat and stable it was. I'm not going to safely be able to turn the boost uh, up and steer the car or handle the car any higher than this. It's starting to break traction now. But it's the same result all the way up 20, 20 some PSI that I've tested with. Dead steady, perfectly flat boost control, quick spool. Um, just all around a great boost controller. Okay, I did one more pull and um, gave it just a little bit more, a quarter more turn. As you see, 19 PSI was the result. Um, it can go higher. My car is tuned to 21, but once I get past 15, 16, it's too difficult to hold a camera and drive it at the same time. Okay, so that was testing of my uh, new boost controller design. As you see, it performed very well. There was um, Nice quick spool. That's a GT35R turbo, which isn't exactly small. And uh, as you saw, it spooled nice and quick, which is um, due in part to this design. These, on the other hand, as we talked about earlier, can hinder that. It outperforms or performs equal to many of the high dollar ones, including the Hallman, Turbo XS, many others. 
Um, please remember though that if your wastegate system is too small for your setup, no boost controller is going to help you with creep issues. Um, if your wastegates just simply can't bleed off enough pressure, you will get creep. Um, I took this up to Redline a couple times during those pulls, which is 9600, and as you saw, I had neither any creep nor any fall off. This this boost controller works very well, and especially for the price, I'm, it outperforms or performs equal to one's cost, and you know many, many, many times more. And um, you just can't beat that in the long run.